There's nothing but net when these kids shoot hoops on the same court as b-ball legends Patrick Ewan, Michael Jordan, and Cheryl Swoops. In the 21st century, many more New Yorkers own cars and can appreciate this magnificent bridge. Transit Transit News recently attended its renaming for the late Robert F. Kennedy. Whenever you see this hazmat emergency truck, you know that safety has arrived. For 20 years, Music Under New York has offered musicians a chance at performing in front of transit commuters. The Dramatics is one such group. The biggest and uh, strongest impression that we can possibly make is at any given time bringing people from all around the world together in one semicircle to enjoy something that they have connected to, which is the drum, the rhythm, the beat. And we added the horns to put some melody around it just so they can feel more connected. William Johnson assembled this diverse group of musicians with a vision of connecting people who share his universal love for music. I never heard anything that was as li lively and as good as this. It was very positive. I liked it. I thought they had like a lot of soul with their music, and it was just really entertaining down here. I had a good time. I like to dance a lot, so some of the dance moves have kind of been uh, from my like, you know, kicking the kicking the, the hips of the other guys, you know. But um, just a lot of fun. I like to come out here and like feed off the energy of this crowd, and everybody seems to really like it. And, so much fun. Their unique sound creates an energy that keeps the city moving with a blend of Latin, African, and soulful rhythm. Some of everything, some of everything, because New York is a melting pot and you can find everything here. You know, we try to incorporate that in our music so that we can give that back to them. They can feel like they have a part of this. It's about American culture, it's not your culture, my culture, or her culture, it's our culture. We could all use a break from the everyday hustles of our commutes, so let dramatics stop you in your tracks. I'm Dave Wallen, reporting for Transit Transit News. The Weeksville Society was founded in 1971 and works to preserve one of Brooklyn's earliest communities for others to see. A historical site that provides relevant information to all of our visitors. We have school tours that are available Tuesday through Fridays as well as public tours. James Weeks, a free African-American, set up the area in the 1800s and called it home. As visitors walk through Weeksville, they can let their imagination travel back in time and wonder what life was like. Weeksville probably was more agricultural uh, during this period of time. It would have been peopled ultimately by primarily African-Americans, although there is um, documentation to show that it was interracial even back then. The Weeksville Society emphasizes the significance of the African-American experience in America. People from all walks of life come to learn about its history. We get all kinds of folks who are interested in a variety of things which they can find out here, which we hope are historical in nature for them. You not only come in to see these houses interpreted to three different time periods and how are they furnished and how they look on the outside, but what's the story of post-enslavement? And how does that fit into your notion of what uh, American history is all about? To be sure that the organization continues, the Weeksville Society has future plans to expand the legacy that began nearly 170 years ago. As bed -Stuy transforms itself, a message of pride serves as a reminder of this neighborhood's rich African-American history. bed -Stuy is alive with food, music, and history. So grab your Metro card and make this your next destination. I'm Dave Wallen for Transit Transit News. Taking the train to the plane took on a whole new meaning when one MTA worker Both took the, the train best. to restore planes <laughs> on the flight deck of the intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. The preparation in painting each one started with specific historical details. Every airplane is a different individual. Uh, some had more corrosion problems than others because the, the environment we're in, the New York City environment, is just awful for airplanes to be outside in. And some of these airplanes have been displayed outside for 25 years. So we had to assess the situation, look at corrosion issues, look at the problems on each individual airplane, and then come up with a repair process that was tailor-made for each one. Somebody else, average person off the street, they're not going to know when they have a spray gun from another end. The exact trigger, where you hold the trigger, it's like second nature to the painting, but it means all the difference between a good job and a, and a bad job. PJ had an all-hands-on-deck attitude when he learned that restoring the planes on this prized World War II aircraft carrier was needed. The call to duty was an opportunity for this MTA veteran to incorporate some of his skills from the day-to-day -day operations with New York City Transit. I wish everybody comes down to, to see this wonderful ship, all the planes, and try to have some kind of idea what is involved. 
what was involved going to the restoration of these planes, and then, then the history behind them. Whether by land or by sea, this transit employee is doing his part in restoring America's history. I'm Dave Wallen, reporting for Transit Transit News.